Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In today's episode, I thought we talk once again about lambdas. Um, we already covered a couple of things uh, regarding lambdas. And today I like to focus on the captures of lambda. So the different ways of lambdas, they can capture your variables. And as you can see, um, quite a bit unusual. We start in Compile Explorer today and not in C++ Insights, but um, you're still on the right channel. This is the C++ Insights YouTube channel. But have a look at the code as you can see it here. Um, it's a class test. It contains a single int member called A. And then I have a constructor there. It takes a single arg argument. And then I have a constructor there which takes a single argument. It's also an integer. And uses that one to initialize the class member A. Now in the body of the constructor, I have a lambda in line number nine called lamp and it captures by copy and returns a plus two. Now in line number 11 and 15, I'm invoking this lambda and I'm printing out the result. And in between in line number 13, I increment a by one. So the class member a gets incremented by one. But at the top there in line number nine, I'm capturing a by copy. And then in line 21, I'm invoking an object of test called t with number two. So let me do the math for you. Two plus two equals four. The question to you is, and that's why we are in Compile Explorer today. So what is the output of this program? Um, I give you a couple of seconds to think about it. You can also pause the video to make up an answer for yourself and find a reason for it. Okay, now I'm running this binary in Compile Explorer and look at that. The first output of the printf in fact is four. So two plus two is four. That's perfectly fine. But the second printf, the second invocation of the lambda that now returns five. So for some reason, we seem to see an effect when we increment the member from test A, which is captured by copy in the Lambda. So we shouldn't see an effect, right? So the usual response to this question is two times four is printed out, but in fact, it's four and five. And now let's switch over to C++ Insights to figure out why. All right, so here we are in C++ Insights. We have the same source code on the left um, that we previously saw in Compile Explorer. And I already hit transform. So here's the transformation. As you know from previous episodes, lambdas are of course a class internally with a call operator. And now we can see the first part of what's special here. In the body of this call operator, so essentially in the body of the lambda, the lambda returns underline underline this. And this is a special name I have to create which you can also see in line 21 and line 25 where it gets initialized. But line 21 is the interesting part because here we can see that this this refers to a pointer of type test. Okay. So what we capture here actually in line number 30, where we create the lambda, the corresponding line is, is nine on the left. That is that we capture this by copy. That's what we tell the compiler in line number nine to do. But this is a pointer. And by that, this gets captured as a copy of a pointer, which is simply another pointer initialized with the same memory location. And the reason for this is that we are inside a class and the equal sign in line number nine of the capture says capture everything by copy that's used inside the lambda's body. And we are using the member A of test. 
So and instead of copying each member into the class, the compiler here captures this by copy, so it gives us another pointer. And the reason for this underline, underline this on the right, I think um, that's clear, I cannot create a member called this without the underline, um, because it's a reserved keyword here. So this is the reason why we see this effect, why we see that A gets incremented inside the lambda despite that we capture by copy. So what can we do about it? We can say that we like to capture Stardius. This is a C++17 feature and if I use this, sorry for the double this here, then we can see that in line number 21, instead of now capturing a pointer, it captures the entire object. It's still called this um, because it's a reference to the this object. And this is how you can ensure that you have a deep copy of the class of all of the members in this class inside your Lambda. So you can read this as a dereference of this uh, in line number 13. It gets, it gets perfectly visible. So we dereference this and, and make the Lambda co capture that object. So here it creates a copy of this object. This is better because if you do the same thing in the Compiler Explorer now, if I switch back and I say here that I like to capture Stardust then we can see that we immediately get the result we probably expect, so we get four and four. Th there are use cases when you like the previous version, where it's simply a pointer because it takes up less memory, maybe you are happy with that because you know that in between a call to the lambda, that the members do not change, or it's even all right if they do, you like to see this effect. But uh, in the cases you don't like this, then you can use the star this version. That's it as far as it goes up to C++17. If we change our standard, let's say to C++20 at this point, then sadly Clang in my version here doesn't tell us anything. If we do that in Compiler Explorer, With Clang we see the same because it's Clang 12 currently. But if we switch to GCC, they tell us that the implicit capture of this via the equal sign in the brackets is deprecated in C++20. So we are on a road where the equal sign no longer means an implicit capture of this and we get a new tool or a new utility to achieve what we want here, we can now say that we want to capture this, okay? And then the warning goes away in GCC. And if I do the same thing in C++ Insights, we see no difference, except that as opposed to the version where I say start this, we are back to capturing a pointer. But this is what we want in this case. And this is the power of what C++20 slowly brings us for compatibility reasons. We are still not there that it's uh, fully deprecated. It's just the start of a deprecation. But I now can distinguish, I can say equal only captures everything else, but not this. And now I can specifically say whether I want a copy of this or simply a copy of the pointer, okay? So this is a, another way how we can express better in our code what the intent is, which we got now with C++20. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you learned something about it. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.